Was Red Bull caught cheating by Toto Wolf in the FIA? In today's video, we're going to be going through that. So guys, don't forget to like this video. And if you do want more F1 content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But let's get into today's story. So Mercedes team's principal, Toto Wolf, has labeled the FIA's initiation that rival teams have abused floor flexibility regulations as a shocker. And, you know, obviously Red Bull and Mercedes have had their feud for a while now, and he was definitely targeting Red Bull as one of those teams. F1's governing body has produced a revised B version of the technical directive introduced in Canada two weeks ago aimed at battling bouncing and porpoising. With the new metric to be enforced at the French Grand Prix, ensuring teams fall within an acceptable range of vertical oscillations. But a second part of the TD focused on plank wear and flexibility has been overlooked somewhat, with the FIA suggesting these parts go hand in hand with the metric in relation to the same issues. So. You know, Toto Wolf also did call out not just Red Bull, but also McLaren and also Ferrari. And it's very surprising that he did call out the top teams as well. So that was very interesting to see. So Wolf has picked out this section of the TD as the most noteworthy and suggested rivals has been exploiting these regulations. The interesting part in the B version is not the dots on the rear wing where you measure the bouncing. I think that is an important one to come to terms with, said Toto Wolf. He continued to say there is an interesting second topic, bibs and floors. I believe some teams have been stretching that a bit too much and that is going to change before Paul Ricard. FIA insinuation a great surprise. So when the FIA introduce updated regulations on technical directives, it is usually a case of there being no smoke without fire with teams found to be infringing or traveling a boundary line near legality. Nobody has an idea until the FIA brought it up in the last technical advisory committee or TAC, which has a great surprise to all the teams explained wolf what is in the regulations and what the intent of regulations is really clear there is no argument why that could deflect more than what is in the regs a bit of surprise to say the least more of a shocker continued toto so he really did have some big things to say about what was actually going on i think it was really interesting to see this all really unfold and what toto had to say about teams such as red bull and obviously red bull had to fire back and gave their opinion especially with christian Horner. So Red Bull boss Christian Horner has no concerns over the legality of the floor on the RB18 ahead of the technical directive coming into force in Formula 1 next month. Max Verstappen heads the driver's championship while his team sits atop the constructors standings. Red Bull and Ferrari have been a standout performers throughout the 2022 Formula 1 season, leading some to suggest both were exploiting a loophole within the regulations, especially that the underfloor of the RB18 and F175 flex at point outside of those currently measured by the FIA, allowing the cars to be run lower to the ground and therefore produce more grip. It's a point which came to light as the FIA worked to introduce a technical directive. It claims for safety reasons to address porpoising. Over the Austrian Grand Prix, a meeting of the Formula 1 Commission saw that delayed until the Belgian Grand Prix after the summer break to allow teams an opportunity to make any changes that may be necessary. The technical directive is obviously focused on the bouncing and porpoising, which only certain cars have struggled with, Horner told Sky Sports. I think it's due for discussion in a technical working group, which is the correct form. Because as we saw at Silverstone, no cars were really affected by it. So the argument being, is it duty of the competitor to make sure their car is safe, or is it duty to the FIA to ensure that the competitors run their cars safely. Horner went on to outright reject accusations that his team was bending the rules with the interpretation when it came to flexible floors. Total rubbish, he said when it was suggested that a flexible floor allowed the team to avoid the porpoising experience by others. I think we're getting issues mixed up. Maybe he's referring to cars that are around him at the moment. He added in regards with the implication from Mercedes Total Wolf that Red Bull was exploiting the loophole. I have no idea but absolutely no issues or concerns on our floor. So I think I think this was really interesting to see and Formula 1 returns with the French Grand Prix on July 22 to 24th from Paul Ricard and like I've said before Mercedes and Red Bull have been going back and forth for all I could imagine. If you have watched the Netflix series before and a lot of you F1 fans maybe have Drive to Survive you do really see that Toto and Christian don't really have the best relationship and they are at each other's throats any chance they can get. I absolutely love the competitive fiery guys I think it's honestly fantastic it's what makes the sports that much better you know you need those rivalries and i think it's honestly great to see some of that competitiveness come out in both of them 
Now, when it comes to this, I really do think that, you know, Christian Horner, like he mentioned here, it's total rubbish. And, you know, obviously Mercedes haven't been going so well as of lately. So maybe because of that, you know, they're pretty much going to just try to grab at anything for why Red Bull and Ferrari are really outperforming them. But it is really hard to see that, you know, Mercedes has been at the top of its game. Yes, obviously Verstappen took the win last year, but they've been at the top of the game for the while and they're looking to get back there and stay at the top as long as they can. So I think that was a really interesting story to see about what was going on. But speaking about everything, Horner is worried about the French Grand Prix, saying that it's going to be a bigger problem. So Christian Horner fears for the French Grand Prix in combination with the enforcement of track limits where it already caused record numbers in Austria. It might be even worse at Paul Ricard. So around 43 laps were cancelled at the Austrian Grand Prix for exceeding track limits and no fewer than four drivers were given a five-second penalty. They had exceeded the track limits no less than four times. However, four drivers remained within the lines throughout the race. The amount of infringement and penalties handed out came in for criticism from the stewards and race directors. Max Verstappen, for example, called it a joke that so many laps are taken and Lewis Hamilton expresses dissatisfaction over the board radio in Spielberg. So there are some concerns for Paul Ricard. So Horner is also concerned about the track limits, which we talked about. And the Brighton also saw the infringements at the Red Bull ring and argues that the character of the circuit makes it easier for drivers to drive the characters so motorsport.com that the characters of the circuit also invites the drivers to push the limits however the red bull racing team boss is even more worried about the french grand prix and he actually said i expect paul ricard to be a bigger problem because you can really gain time there and of course you have hectares of asphalt there so that also invites you to drive off track so it is going to be interesting like i said the french grand prix is going to be happening pretty soon guys um so almost just a week out and I think it is going to be a great race and it's going to be a good experience for everyone. Now, on top of this, Red Bull have also made it known that they know that their advantage is coming to a close because, you know, teams such as Ferrari and Mercedes are catching up to them and they really got to push the limits, especially in the second half of this season. So Red Bull Racing and Ferrari have built the best cars for 2022 with the RB18 and F175 respectively. Each has a completely different philosophy, but both are equally successful. In the early stages, of the season, Red Bull was very fast on the straights and Ferrari was fast in the corners. However, as the season progresses, the cars are getting closer and closer to each other. Since the Canadian Grand Prix, Ferrari has had a new rear wing and in Canada it was only available to Charles Leclerc. In Austria, both drivers received the new rear wing. The new wing is larger and provides a greater effect of the straight when the DRS is open and I think that honestly is going to be huge moving forward. Leclerc and signs make the difference. As the gap between the two cars narrow, the drivers have more influence on performers. The Ferrari team's boss therefore stresses that Leclerc and signs performed fantastically in Spielberg. In his view, Red Bull still has a slight advantage on the straights, but with the right balance in the car, Ferrari was faster. And I really did see this in the last few Grand Prix that, you know, the Ferrari team have really done a really, really good job getting their cars up to speed. Red Bull may be faster in some areas, but when it comes to all rounded the ferrari car does feel a lot faster now the speed didn't help carlos signs enough though as he crashed out of a few laps before the end ferrari are already at their maximum number of engine parts and have proved to be a lot less reliable than its competitors although the speed is increasing the reliability should be a concern for maranello and i really do think that is going to be playing a huge part you know obviously when it comes to maintenance and reliability of the car it hasn't really been going too well for ferrari and there's still a lot of races to go especially for that level so you know they're gonna really have to try to stay within it so it will be interesting to see how it all plays out but you know this is going to be a really really good grand prix that is coming up so obviously the paul ricard is honestly a really great track now when it comes to it two drs zones which is fantastic and i do think that's where red bull could really shine now when it comes to the course itself or the circuit itself the circuit length is actually 5842 meters the laps race is 53 and it does run in a clockwise direction there's actually 13 corners so there's quite a lot of corners in this race and with that ferrari may be able to actually look pretty good when it comes to taking advantage of that as we all know red bull's cars are faster so they will do well in the drs zone but ferrari could honestly take the win when it comes to those corners especially with that high of a corner so so there's a lot of things to look out for when it comes to what's happening so far when it comes to the driving standing 
things that are occurring right now. We actually have Verstappen at the top with 208 points and Leclerc at 170. So Red Bull does have a little bit of a comfortable lead. And if we go over to constructors as well, we see Red Bull racing at the top with 359 points and Ferrari at 303. So, you know, seeing this play out, it will definitely be interesting to see what happens next. You know, the French Grand Prix is going to really be a deciding factor when it comes to, you know, the momentum for the rest of the season. So Red Bull is still at the top. We have Ferrari second, Mercedes third at 237, so a little bit far away. McLaren is a far away away at fourth position, and they're actually only on 81 points. So it's really just up to the three of Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes really battling it out um, if all goes well when it comes to them. You know, we've had had some races where um, not the whole team has actually completed the race when it comes to Red Bull and Ferrari and Mercedes were able to take advantage of that getting you know Lewis Hamilton in third place and then also George Russell at fourth place so you know to have both of them actually finish the race especially hopefully podium for when it comes to Red Bull it will be good to see that if we're just making some crazy predictions I think in all honesty I think Leclerc could actually get pole position but I do think Verstappen could actually take it for the win when it comes to the French Grand Prix so those are my predictions I want you guys let me know down in the comments what you think let me know what's going to happen in qualifying and what's going to happen in the actual race i do think you know leclerc would actually still get podium and i don't really know i do think lewis hamilton may be making a return so we'll see how that goes but thanks so much for watching guys i'll see you soon peace